Hi everyone, welcome to another seminar of Psychology and Society hosted by Steel Point. My name is Maria Laguna and today we will be discussing migration and identity. In today's seminar we will be talking about the factors that influence the mental health outcomes of migrants, including the psychic journeys of the migrants, what happens on the inside, not just what happens on the outside. We will be talking about the process of mourning that always takes place in the experience of migration and some fantasies that are activated in the migrant's mind. According to the Argentinian psychoanalysts Greenberg and Greenberg, who were analysts and migrants themselves, the typical experience of the migrant has to do with periods of disorganization, pain, and frustration. These are also due, in part, to the fact that the process of migration dislocates and disrupts even when it occurs under ideal circumstances because it involves a loss of contextual continuity. What are some of the factors that influence the mental health outcomes of the migrant? According to psychoanalyst Salman Akhtar, also experienced in immigration, there's a series of questions that we should ask to get a sense of how the mental health of the migrant is affected. One of the factors that will influence whether someone's mental health is negatively affected or not is whether the immigration is temporary or permanent. In cases where immigration is voluntary, immigrants have more time to prepare, leave their country, say goodbye. Also, they have some of them, they have the option to return to their homeland. They may have the experience of nostalgia, the dream to return to their country of origin, and there's a future where they can ambition returning to their homes, their family and friends. There's also people on work or student visas who know that they're going to be in a new country on a transitory manner. This makes it difficult to plant roots and integrate into a new culture. Not always, but it can happen. Not being able to decide how long someone can stay in a chosen country can bring a lot of struggles, anxieties, and complex relationships to dependency and control. Another factor that may influence the mental health of the migrant has to do with the reasons for leaving their country. Sometimes a uh, relationship is ambivalent, where the person wants to leave, but at the same time has a very strong part that wants to come back. Other people, such as refugees, may be relieved to leave and may have a hard time feeling nostalgic for their homeland, whereas others who are migrating in a temporary manner may not feel particularly attached to the new country or isolated from their own. Greenberg and Greenberg remind us that children and adolescents there are, in a way, exiles or refugees because they didn't have a choice when leaving their country. They have to follow their parents or their caregivers. This is usually a topic pretty neglected in the psychological literature. Another thing to wonder to get a sense of how much one's mental health will be affected with migration is what feelings does the migrant have about their home country? Some people live with a very warm feeling about their homeland, where others may live with relief, maybe some feelings of resentment, anger, disappointment, etc. In most cases, though, the relationship is quite ambivalent, uh, where one feels a little bit positive and a little bit negative about the same country. In these cases, the mourning of the homeland may be a little bit more complicated, and this can impact, in turn, one's mental health. Another, fac another factor that is definitely influential in the mental health of migrants are the emotions with which the host culture receives them. The host culture also has a response to the newcomer. It's not just the newcomer that has a response to the new culture. The way the migrant is welcome, either with warmth, affection, or with rejection, is definitely going to influence their relationships, their sense of self, their identity, and the ways in which they connect to their home countries. This brings us to a very useful term called double consciousness, 
This term was originally coined by W.E.B. Dubois in sociology to get a better sense of the experience of people of color who see themselves through a double lens. First, as who they are. Second, as what society thinks they are. This could also be applied to immigrants, where they have to see themselves through the lens of who they are, who they perceive themselves to be, their culture, their race, their ethnicity, but also what the host society perceives them to be. Psychoanalysts Greenberg and Greenberg talk about identity in a very interesting way. They say that the process of feeling a sense of self, understanding who we are, recognizing through ourselves through time and space, has to do with three different domains. Spatial integration, temporal integration, and social integration. The spatial integration has to do with our ability to recognize our bodies, ourselves in the world that we live in. The temporal integration has to do with our ability to recognize ourselves through time, to look at ourselves in the past and recognize that we are the same person, even though we may have changed. Finally, the social integration has to do with our ability to feel connected with the world while also remaining ourselves. So what are the effects of immigration on one's identity? According to this model, we can say that the migrant's identity is changed because their sense of space, time, and social interactions inevitably change. The literature on psychology and migration has a lot to do with some of the internal journeys that the migrant goes through. Some of these journeys have to do with going from loving or hating the new country to feeling ambivalent about it from feeling too near or too far, from feeling an optimal distance to the new country, from focusing on their yesterday, our experiences in the previous country, to focusing on today. And finally, from a split of mine versus yours to a feeling of ours. In the internal journey of loving versus hating to ambivalence, a lot of things can happen. Sometimes the migrant idealizes their homeland while demonizing their new country or vice versa. Everything left behind was great, the new country is awful, or the other way around. The end of the journey, if everything goes well, it's a place where the migrant can feel ambivalent about both places where they can appreciate the good, the bad, and everything in between of both lands. Another psychic journey that some migrants go through is from feeling too near or too far in the new country to feeling a sense of optimal distance. It can be very common, initially, usually, that there's some fear of being too close to the new culture and losing our sense of who we are or where we come from. There's a tension between fears of being overly identified with the new culture and feeling isolated from it. The goal, if everything goes well, is that the migrant will feel a sense of belonging and not belonging at the same time, keeping some aspects of themselves represented by their old culture and the new one. Another internal psychic journey that some migrants go through has to do with feeling stuck in the yesterday or in the future. And the goal, if everything goes well, if there's a process of integration, is that the migrant will be more connected to the present, to the here and now. It can be common uh, among some migrants that there's some periods of depression about the past about what was lost, about what was left behind, about what may not be able to be recovered, and or anxiety about the future. Who will we become? What our lives are gonna look like in the future? The goal would be to be more rooted in the present where past and future do not replace today, but they enrich it. 
Finally, another internal psychic journey that some migrants experience is the one of mine versus yours to ours. In other words, sometimes there's a split between this feeling of my culture versus your culture, my habits, your habits, I'm the victim, you're the victimizer. And the goal would be to get to a place where there's an experience of intersubjectivity or a sense of ours. It is not you who affect me, but we mutually affect each other. When we think about the psychological processes that happen as a result of migration, we must not forget the process of mourning. According to Sigmund Freud, mourning is regularly the reaction to the loss of a loved person or to the loss of some abstraction which has taken the place of a person, such as one's country, liberty, an ideal, and so on. We not only mourn people, but we also mourn ideals, our countries, our habits, etc. There are three characteristics of the migrant's mourning that make it very specific. One, the mourning of the immigrant is partial. The object, in other words, the country, hasn't gone away. Therefore, it's not that it's a loss, a complete loss, but a loss in the sense that the person is no longer there. The other characteristic is that it can be a recurring process of mourning. The person that emigrates can come and go in relation to the object. So it's always a process of losing it and refining it. The third characteristic is that it's transgenerational. Children that are born in the host country are also affected even if they didn't migrate themselves. What are some of the things that the migrant mourns when they leave their country? Well, first, their family, their loved ones, their friends, their whole social circle, their objects, such as their furniture, their toys, their items that have some emotional significance, their social status, their sense of self, the kind of person that they used to be, and their language. What other things do you think can be mourned as a process of migration? Let's talk about it once we finish with the video. So, as we know, the process of mourning doesn't necessarily go through a linear progression. There's no right or wrong, but there are healthier and unhealthier ways of processing. How can we know that someone is healthily working through the mourning process? There are some pointers, such as one's identity being reaffirmed instead of losing yourself in the new culture or completely refusing to adapt. Another marker could be to have a more realistic concept of the abandoned culture. The idea that your former country was not the best of the best, but it was all not, also not the worst of the worst. Then um, there's a more realistic reassessment of the new culture. Things are no longer so threatening, so foreign, so new, so bad, or so great. There's a more realistic and more multidimensional perspective of the new place where one lives. In other words, there's a better sense of integration between the old and the new culture. There's so much more to be discussed around the psychology of migration and identity. I'm looking forward to any questions, comments that you may have. And as always, stay tuned at the end of the video or feel free to put your comments in the box section, either in YouTube or in the Zoom chat. Thank you so much and I'll see you next month.